presentation and um, I want to tell everybody that I how I wish that before coming to Ireland I'm in Ireland still at the moment that if I I have find somebody that time to give me all this room all, all this kind of tips and advices it would have made a lot of things easier uh, for us so we really appreciate um, your uh, effort and your tips, Dr. Ati, and thank you. I, I, I really learned a lot from it. Uh, thank you for that. And we'll go you back to Hussam if you will give us more questions. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Ati. Uh, actually, we have one question only that came up, but I don't think it is related to your uh, presentation. Mm -hmm. But I personally have maybe uh, questions that actually can can span the whole day more or less uh, so maybe the first one it is regarding if uh, a surgeon or a clinician uh, was say performing a procedure he either forgot something or he did something that's wrong he knows that it will not cause any harm uh, uh, to the patient let's say they forgot if i'm like orthopedic i broke a uh, k-wire uh, and then and i cannot get it out what i should do after that and what are my duty what are the steps after that so this is my first question and then I will that's a, come with another one that's a very good point uh I'll give you an example. You know, you have a patient, for example, uh, uh, coming for a list and then for a reason that you cancel the case, for example. Every hospital had its system we called instance form reporting. And actually, when you do instance form reporting, it does take to you, not against you. When you have your annual appraiser, they will look how many times you've done something wrong and you declare it yourself. I'll give you an example. I had an email from the GMC. I have a patient, she, she did write a complaint about me to the GMC and the GMC sent me a reply, said, we're not going to take this further. And the patient, her complaint was, I didn't feel like he gave me all the time I want. And she complained directly to the GFC. Okay. As soon as I get this complaint, and it was actually after my appraisal meeting, but not final signing off my appraisal. And I declare it straight away to the medical director and finished. You know, they know that I have insight. I do reflection about something and declaring instance, people who do surgery and say, oh, I don't have a complication. They're not doing surgery. If you do surgery, you will have a complication. If you have a complication, declare it and see what you've done to it. And you do reflection what you learn from it and what you will apply in the future about this. And that's the human being. If you don't do this, that means you're not working. Then you have to declare and see the pro process of each hospital or each system, how you report this and how you learn from it. You can hear this if you watch our the parliament meeting here, which is uh, and the TV 24-7. And they say, if they do a parliament problem, they say, the lesson to learn. Lesson to learn. You will hear this term a lot in the uh, British Isle. And listen to learn, yes. We all make a mistake, and we are human beings. Be, have insight, and declare it, and see it. And how do you learn from it? And if you need to be punished about it, well, nothing wrong with that. We have a lot of of, uh, of member of the parliament get penalty and tickets, and even if, but if they lie, they get more penalty and tickets rather than if they are they have insight and declare it. I think it's very important for as a newcomer to know what's the process of reporting the instance, and that will be for uh, a part of the induction for you at any hospital. I think. Thank you, Dr. Rati. I think Dr. Walid wants to also give some comments. Yes, please, Dr. Walid. So, thanks so much. I, I would like to make a confess and ask a question. Uh, so, the confession here, I was asked by the Caesar officer or advisor because my Caesar application didn't show any complaint and reflection on a complaint. That's true. And they said straight away, your application is going to fail before because of that. I Absolutely. Said, Honestly, I 
didn't have any complaint in my life except one case went to the court more than 10 years ago in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. they, they, they said, it's gonna fail, no doubt. And then yeah. I had to co consult a colleague in United Kingdom and tell him, please advise. I am not, I don't want to be like marked as a liar or I didn't lie in any single word in my application. So I don't want to create something that didn't happen. He said, it doesn't have to be with a patient. And then I started to think about any of the troubles I had during my career. And I found one small trouble that happened with one of the colleagues in United Arab Emirates teaching a course. And then I created that and I submitted that and it Excellent. went fine. So you are a human. It is not acceptable that you say I have no problems. It will be reflected as if arrogant. You don't see your mistakes. That's a big problem. So you have to have mistakes. So I would advise at this occasion that if you have anything in your life, immediately, instantly, once it happens, write it down. And once you write it down, discuss it with someone, reflect on it, put it in your plan of improvement, put that on the SWOT analysis, make it a story. It will be very beneficial at one stage of your, of your life, which is if you're applying for Caesar or training or in interviews, you have to make your own real story rather than putting that in the blind spot in the back of your mind and forget about it. And at this stage, you will not find exactly. anything. So my question or... So can, can, I, I, can Dr. Walid, before we leave this, this question, can just I expand a little bit. Uh, I just want to connect uh, what we learned today from Something our uh, uh, presenters uh, about uh, so th this when something wrong happens uh, not intended many of what we learned today will come <laughs> into action so duty of candor this is one thing that you have to go and talk to your patient I'm sorry this has happened and we this is a case this is what will happen this is what we are expecting and this has to be as soon as possible there is no hiding over here as dr abdulati said it is an open culture it is transparent you have to go and talk to your patient you have to document it to say this has happened and this is why it happens and write it on the notes because again one famous quote over here if it did is not documented then it didn't happen so maybe you talk to the patients but you didn't put it down in writing then you didn't talk to the patient in front of of the court if you didn't write it down then maybe you, you you were trying to hide even if you told the whole world outside that you did this mistake but you didn't document it and then it comes uh, what dr ahmed abbas said it's about the audit so the audit, we have something called a mortality and morbidity meeting, and this goes along with the audit. So actually, you go in the mor uh, mor uh, mortality and morbidity meeting, and you tell them, this is what happened during my surgery. We learn from it uh, this and that, and we put some measures so this will not happen again. So it is about, again, it's not about punishment, but as Dr. Abdelati said, about listen, learn, how to avoid this in the future. So at the end of the day, what I want to say, you will find everything that have said today during the day is connecting with each other to make this system. So when you come here, you need to understand all these things because maybe small things small thing that you say maybe this is not important I, i've looked at something and i'm uh, oh i did this mistake nobody uh, saw me and i will not talk about it i'm afraid to say that could lead to you lose your license and there is no work more in the uk so be careful about these things and here as dr abdati said it is about lesson learned as Dr. Walid said, it's about reflection, why it has happened. It's about uh, root uh, cause analysis. So you go through it and you put a plan for this not to happen again. And finally, honesty and transparency. Thank you. Yes, Dr. Walid, your question now. 
So I have <laughs> found a lot of similarities between your way of thinking and my way of thinking. If you allowed me to continue, I was <laughs> asking <laughs> Rabbi Al-Ati to reflect on the duty of Kandur. Well, so I that's why you smiled to... at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I understand now why the smile. Okay. <laughs> yes. So uh, duty of Kandur is a do or die in, in the British system. If something wrong happens, and my understanding, if you don't tell the patient, if this something wrong affected the patient outcome or did not affect the patient outcome, you have to explain it. You have to tell, regardless affecting or not affecting the patient mortality, morbidity, or anything, anything related to the patient care. I'm keen to get the most of experience of Mr. Ablati about the duty of candor with an example or two of your own practice during these years, please. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. I think duty of candor now is the GMC requirement. Okay, if you don't do it when it's happened, there is a, you will go through a, a fitness to practice panel, which can assess you and maybe cancer to rising, like Dr. Hussam said. Now, it will be introduced to you guys in your induction because it's a part of the induction for any newcomer. It's not just doctor, by the way, it's the nurses, porter, and everybody working. It's not just, we're, we're not the only people make mistake. Other people do mistake. Okay. Now, if you do the a whole idea about the duty of condor, when you hear this word, what's a bloody duty of condor word? It's, it's the whole idea of that if something's wrong, you're one, you recognize that something wrong happened. Two, what's your plan of action to, for to, to sort this problem. Three, what you learn from this problem. And those three things is the main things. And like Dr. Waeed said and Dr. Sam, you reported your honesty to the patient. One of the good things to reduce the litigation against you from the patient is to tell them and take them in your side. They will feel, oh, my sweet doctor tried to do this, but this happened. I love to hear this because that's mean, okay, she's not going to take the other side and be against me. No, she will be with me because she will feel sorry for me that this happened. Oh, you're very tired, doctor. You work a long hours. I'm really sorry that this happened to me. If all of this, it's a part of the duty of condor. Duty of condor, you have to document it. It's from the medical legal point in the future. Fine. You tell the patient, you explain the patient, you tell them what you've done toward this instance. She's here. No. And, and uh, what you're planning to do and what did you learn from this? Nothing wrong if you tell the patient, actually, I was trying to release this, the, the sigmoid colon to have access to the ovary, but I made a hole in the sigmoid colon. Okay, but uh, next time I think if I do it this way, I may avoid it. Nothing wrong to say this to the patient. The patient will be in your side rather than against you. And that's the whole idea. You document it for the medical legal and it's a part of the gen general medical counsel requirement. Duty of condor, I didn't mention it because it's, it's a part of the induction to mm -hmm. any uh, new doctor, but it's come from the background of honesty honesty or sin honesty there is two things you have to learn uh, mainly when you come to the england you don't have to show other people that you're clever okay one example a doctor came from egypt and he he came and told the nurses oh gosh i had done a really good cesarean section very good one it was difficult but i done it really good and you know what she answered him i think this is part of your job to do okay <laughs> then if you do something you know, uh, good, don't talk about it. Let other people talk about it. It will come back to me. If you do something good in life, it's come back to you. If you do something bad, we all have this potential to do something bad. If you learn from it, it's in your side, not against you. Thank you very much, Dr. Michael. 
Uh, okay, well, he, Dr. Walid, have another question or comment? Yeah, he said uh, two uh, questions. <laughs> yes. oh, <laughs> no, yes. it's actually a continuation of the duty yeah. of candor. So that taught me in my life to be careful when I consent the, paper, the patient for anesthesia. The duty of candor, the first thing comes into action. Did you discuss those risks and consent the patient for them? Starting from the IV cannulation to the intubation, everything, every risk you can imagine may be a side effect or a drawback coming frequent or less frequent in our practice. You have to explain it to the patient. And then if, God forbid, something wrong happens, you will come to him. Do you remember our discussion after <laughs> I'm sorry and all that? You know, our discussion about such side effect, it's rare, but if it happens to someone that will be 100% for himself, my sincere apologies. We have this and that in that occasion. I am sorry. And this is emphasize the importance of what you consented beforehand. If it happens, you are not saying for the patient, you agreed on that. That's non-professional. I'm just reminding you that this is recorded in the books and documented in the text that is a side effect. I wish it didn't happen. I'm sorry it had happened. But again, it is something that we know with these surgeries or with this practice. So duty of condor always puts me in a context of consent, what you're doing with adverse effects and the percentage of adverse effects the most common example for that in the British system, epidural analgesia. You have to mention them one by one before putting an epidural and the incidence rate of every single complication. Like this is one in 100, this is one in 1,000, this is one in 100,000. This is how you want to do that. And you have a sheet, either paper or electronic, that you tick all this as you mentioned that. So if you ticked one box, and the patient said afterwards, I wasn't told about that, patient is honest. So don't take any box you didn't mention. And if that happens later on in the duty of Kandur, you mentioned it, but again, you have to document and speak to the patient. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. So uh, I have Dr. Uh, Atif. Uh, he wants to comment. Yes, please. Uh, just a com just extreme case, which I had, I faced that a patient that I operated on and he had, did not have any complication, but he said that I did not mention complication, which is written in the box. And if, it, if he knew about it, he wouldn't have the surgery done. Fortunately, I gave him a leaflet and it was written there, but it was an official complaint that I did not tell him everything. You know, in the consent form, you cannot write everything in the, the consent or two, three line. You only write the common complication. But this patient complained that I did not tell him about Communication, which never happened to him, but he had a leaflet. So a leaflet is important. I agree. I agree. I agree. I just to, to add to you, uh, if you look at the consent form for a plastic surgery, the consent form is twenty page of the plastic <laughs> surgeon to avoid the problem. Very on. Yeah, Doctor Zaki. Yeah. Yes, thanks, uh, Sam. Uh, just just to add to uh, uh, what you all said. So, uh, if we look at the domains of good medical practice from the GMC, so this duty of candor comes under domain four, which is maintaining yes. trust. So, so it's nothing to do with the pay, whether the patient has a complication or not. It's about yourself, about you being honest and yes. uh, and being trustable. So, again, this is one of the ways to show evidence, in when you're looking for documentation, how to how to uh, where you're applying for a Caesar, for example, you want something to fix the uh, maintaining trust thing. So duty of candor on this instance would be a good way of showing that. Mm -hmm. Not just about complications or, uh, if, uh, no, it's just about yourself. How do you uh, behave your, uh, yourself? How do you, how do you practice? How safe you are? So this is a, a good example of, of showing that. Thank you very much. Thanks. So another question, Dr. Prati, I, I, I promise two. So a situation, we are talking about respect, we are talking about behavior, we are talking about a bit of difference in culture. So you are in the clinic, you had a patient, you're talking to them, 
and then they get angry at you and they are starting shouting what you should do at that stage yeah thank you now the the angry of there is think you mentioned root cause analysis you have you, you your brain has to work very fast to contain this situation most of the time you will be successful to contain it but very rare you cannot contain it okay now patient can come has a fight with his wife and he's already in the bad mood before you even see you okay patient coming who doesn't like the way you look color wise anything language english you will face those things okay a patient coming because they don't accept their problem their medical problem they don't want to believe that they have a cancer for example then you are the bad person okay to brought for him the cancer okay all of those things your brain has to work quickly how to contend and in this situation you always have a chaperone let the chaperone talk to them somebody else will diffuse the the di dynamite by talking to them maybe they don't talk to them in their favor but diffusing things most of the time you content and listen to them do you understand do you want what do you want i'm here to help you tell me what do you want and i will do it okay and let them express most of the time they don't say anything apart from what you said okay but if you reach to the point that there is no solution for this conflicts or are getting heated i think every hospital has a security and there is nothing wrong to call the security if that's reached to this point but most of the time is not going to reach this point and you will content it share other people let other people come in and share it with you okay let the nurse coming and talk he, your registrar your sho come and let them talk to the patient that's may diffuse the, the the approach of anger against you from the patient you to distribute it to other people then it will come down <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> so maybe just just to to confirm that if you if you decided to come to the uk and you are already in your process if you need to learn one thing never ever raise your voice not acceptable you don't see the people here fight on the street you don't see anybody shouting over here they will be angry they will be really really pissed off but they will just talk as in a assertive way but never raise your voice so this thing sometimes it happens in other places in other countries that they shout at each other or even wave their face uh, their hands if, if you remember uh on on i don't remember which presentation they said don't point a finger this is here it's threatening uh, we sometimes say uh and maybe quickly i will tell you something happened with me i was my first week and i was in the ward in the corridor i was talking to a very senior nice consultant and i was telling him you know you know this this guy and then another consultant came running through the corridor running i'm saying it and he thought what why you are pointing at mr misho i said why you are threatening mr misho said i'm not threatening mr misho mr misho is is very senior to me i cannot do that he said no you were pointing a finger on him and then i said no no i'm just telling him. he said okay hasan this is the first lesson for you in here pointing oh. a finger in the uk is threatening sign don't do it again please so a few things but if i will give one thing from reaching from actually getting into the flight if it is british airways if you are not happy don't shout just say can i have this please and that's it and please okay thank you very much so i have another question that uh, came on the question and answer i don't know if dr arte for somebody uh, can pick up because i think this is a difficult one so uh somebody anonymous attendee he asked if there is a list of hospitals that provide sponsorship 
without GMC registration, if there is any link or anything that, that can help them to reach these hospitals. Okay. I'm think, not aware of any. No, no. But, no there yeah. is. There is. I, yeah. I think he's absolutely right, or she's absolutely right. There is certain hospital who can do double sponsorship straight away rather than the normal way of the MTI or the GMC. Each speciality has a different hospital. Yeah, he's and just thinking depends. how he can reach this. He, can, re he can reach this from the Royal College of the Speciality. Okay, oh, they will tell him. And in the GMC, uh, actually, for certain speciality, they have certain hospitals to tell you which one can take double entry sponsorship. And Mr. Ad, uh, Mr. Yeah, Atif, Mr. Actually, Poli, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All the sponsoring body are in the GMC website. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. we can find the Royal Colleges and some hospital. And there and some actually like Babio, which is a British Association of Indian Physicians, they are their sponsoring body. So if you go, go there, you will find yes. the specialty and you'll send the trust and they can approach Another them. Like... Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Dr. Khalik. Thank you. Uh, any question from the panelists to each other? <laughs> are we yes. in time, Sam? Are we in time now? Uh, yeah, three minutes to go. Uh, uh, may I ask, uh, I am really eager to hear uh, from Ahmad Abbas about his impression about the session and if he can, if I have any advice for the attendees given his six years in Ireland. Yeah, if you uh, mind. Two minutes, please. Uh, uh, I learned a lot from this discussion. You know, things in Ireland, to be honest, are, you know, Walid, you were here in Ireland. Um, and a lot of these professionalism tips and uh, tips are not really that big issue in Ireland. Life here is more simple. So, for example, it's my first time to hear about Duty of Condor. Um, uh, maybe Walid as well uh, heard about it when he moved to the UK or something like that. Uh, but I agree, it's all, it's, it's, it's all really uh, important. And uh, my advice to the attendee that that is golden tips, keep it in your mind, always even watch the recording of this uh, session. Uh, provisionalism is really, really very important. We take here uh, kind of courses and we make courses for, 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 to learn provisionalism and learn how to talk, how to speak, how to walk, how to dress and uh, to tackle difficult situation. Uh, so it, I really appreciate this effort you made to learn those people who, who likes to join you in the UK, uh, these things, they will take, if nobody will tell them, it will take one or two years uh, to learn. Uh, the other thing regarding, um, I, I understand that provisionalism is really, really very important. That's, that's why I let all the discussion and, uh, and the question is about provisionalism, not about the audit, which I understand totally. But um, like uh, uh, regarding my, le my lecture, uh, I will go back to it. It's just I forgot to say a few things. Um, for those who are in Saudi Arabia, uh, for example, and uh, I know a lot of, a lot of people are uh, in Saudi and they are looking to move to the, to, to the UK. So um, uh, a lot of hospitals in Saudi have kind of different system to uh, improve quality. So they have uh, different methodology, like quality improvement project uh, from, like, from the start, like audit can be quality improvement project, but in Saudi they have different methods. So it works if you want to do something towards asking them what methods they are using uh, just to uh, start um, doing something that you can show in your CV. That's uh, the, the thing that I like forgot to mention in my lecture. And again, I would like to thank everybody about this interesting uh, discussion that I really have learned a lot from it. Excellent. Thank you very much. So we can uh, call it, uh, we can close this session and hope everything enjoyed it. Uh, unless anybody has a comment. And uh, we have another session that will start immediately, which is about uh, the interviews. It is about the model interviews. We asked the attendees if they can volunteer, we can ask them some question and we'll give them the model. This will not be recorded the part, uh, this part. And there is a very generous offer from uh, Dr. Walid and the Saving Life Academy that for the volunteers, 
they will get 50% discount on their next course about the interviews. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, we'll start the next session uh, with Walid. Back to you, Walid. Thanks so much. So uh, thanks so much, Hassan. Uh, if anyone is interested to be promoted from attendees section to the panelist section, uh, raise hand now, please. And it's now or never. Please just make sure uh, that your mic is OK. And OK, so we have the first one. You are a panelist now. So uh, we need five to seven people. So uh, Raith, OK. Raith Khalil, thanks so much for volunteering. Anyone else? Uh, you can open your mic and camera straight away, Raith Khalil. Anyone else? Thanks so much. OK. Anyone else? We need five to seven. Don't be shy. 